But we gotta drive back to Astoria, park the cargo van, go back to your place, print out scripts, print out call sheets, print out shot lists, print out talent release forms. Credit card authorization forms. And I'm making a call sheet. We'll grab that on our way up. See you tomorrow morning, man. Let's go do it. First shoot, first location, and our elevator is broken. I feel great about it. We're gonna be shooting in some small locations that we'll be shooting to, you know, make look bigger. And that presents us with unique challenges that we hope to kind of illustrate how we go about doing that and, and what our process is with that. We got a small crew, but an effective crew. And we're gonna take you through uh, how it's all done and how we all do it. Shooting in New York, you're very limited by the spaces that you're working in. So we're gonna show a couple of tips and tricks we've learned how to make them not only look larger, but compose scenes within that. How to light them technically, but also logistically, how to run the set in a small space. Drop in three combos, because yeah, right. we don't need them today. Is there anything else we need to discuss for the second location? Well, when we get to the apartment, it's mostly a load in. I think they have a pretty good plan. Uh, we're going to R, which is all the way at the top. Uh, I guess everything comes up. I like that it's big and open and it has high ceilings. And it's easy to get into. Nice. It's a hard room to shoot because of the size and this television right in the middle of it. Really hard to work with coverage we want for the scene the way we want to shoot the scene without seeing the TV. So we're trying multiple options. I think let's rotate it, set it up as an executive office and let's work around the television. We were just stuck on an elevator for like 10 minutes. Really? You're just stuck in the elevator? If the elevator's not working though, we can't get the gear out. That's gonna be a hell of a thing. There's literally an elevator repairman inside the elevator shaft taking apart the elevator. But how are we gonna load up? He's gonna fix it. All right, shall we team? And action. Uh, last two shots in the scene. The room being small, we're doing the master last. So like the wide shot so that whenever we can be loading gear out and getting more physical space to work after we've perfected the meat of the scenes. And I hope the elevator is fixed by the time we need to get off of the roof. If we're in the room, guys, while we're rolling, we need to be behind that monitor. We'll just scrap the dock for the moment, thanks. The elevator's good. The elevator is fixed. Just in time, literally just in time. So we're at Diamond Dogs Bar. Uh, we're shooting a small location. We don't want it to feel small. We want it to feel, you know, nice and cool and like a hip bar. Bars are obviously open at night, so you gotta film early in the morning when they're closed. Our bar scene is a little tight. The location's tough and one of the difficulties is shooting small locations is making them look large and feel organic. It's a really nice bar, but we're trying to make it a little more divey. So uh, we're using some splashes of color and trying to open up the space a little bit. Shooting in tight spaces like this is very difficult for many reasons, um, not to mention the loading in, um, as well as where the gear actually lives while you're shooting. Many times you have to continue to shuffle around. And we're using a few principles to really try and generate as much depth as possible. First of all, the, my rule of thumb is try and find the longest lines that you can, generally. Try and get somewhere out and make a more complex background. We're trying to open up uh, the space by um, isolating the foreground from the background. Generally, we go cool in lens and warm in the background to try and make it feel as deep as possible. So what do you think about doing that first? And bounce in there while those guys are setting up out, out here, yep. you know what I mean? Totally. Get in there and shoot it fast and then move up. Yep. Outside. Let's uh, let's go give it a look. We're starting with the bathroom scene in the bar, and uh, this is a very very tight space. We're always connecting the corners of these rooms as much as we can. Try and get the most amount of space in we can. You gotta do a lot of yoga so, you can, so I can fit the camera. Bye. Bye. The choice to shoot on a morphic allows us to open up the spaces in a more cinematic way. Setting for the next scene, done a little repo and got a little bit more depth into the room. So we put light in Z space, so away towards and away from the lens. One other way we used it to make the space feel larger is putting the lens closer to a foreground or midground element. That space that can often be underutilized in small spaces really makes a room feel larger. So while these tricks work great for the master shots and the wide and the main coverage, they don't always work in the inserts or character coverage of the piece. So you may have to cheat your shot a little bit, move somebody away from a wall, but just be aware of how far you can push it. 
packing up. We're done with the bar location. Location for the apartment that we're shooting this afternoon just called and they uh, are just taxed and their water's off in the building today for some reason. So we have 15 people going to a location to shoot. It doesn't have a bathroom. We're here in Chinatown for our last location of the day. We're unloading in an illegal spot and we got to keep moving and get this done with now because the traffic cop already told me we have to leave. Before you unload your truck, you need to have a plan and you need to communicate that plan to your crew and to your actors. Where's Gripping Electric going to go? Where's makeup going to go? Where are the actors going to be held? And what is your first shot? My plan is just get it off the truck stage up against the wall so we can send the trucks away. I gotta go. One of our last scenes shooting in a small location. You gotta plan out the best you can and, uh, and then rock and roll. So let's see what we see. Let's just clear this uh, area uh, and let's see what, what we see and what's in the frame. Rehearse this guy so we can see what we need to move. All of a sudden this is all in the frame now and you have to move everything. So it, it requires a lot of planning and a lot of just kind of maneuvering. Uh, we had to be very selective with what we brought up from the truck. Uh, and basically get everything we need off the truck, get it up here, and not have extra stuff lying around. James. Shooting, take two. Just uh, finished up. Shooting in small places is very tough. This location was always going to be difficult. We had a planned load-in that they executed very well, so they only brought the gear that they needed. The sky panels were easy to rig in rafters. High ceilings is very advantageous because small space with low ceilings is very tough. We had the Mini, so it really allowed us to work within those environments. Um, super lightweight, super easy to load in, load out. We used a little bit of the Easy Rig. Um, I'd probably do that all day because it's so light. We, uh, we may do with small spaces and you know fast location changes. Very fun to uh, have been able to put together and I'm glad we were able to pull it together so quickly. And I hope you guys learned something uh, while we were shooting this about how to work small spaces.